the areas. And we're down to board comments. We'll start with Stone. Mm -hmm. Hi, mm -hmm. good to have you all here. I am a woman of few words and built in well. Thank you. Thanks for coming to the meeting. It's always important to uh, have community support uh, from Beaver Creek Schools, and thank you for doing your part. And Mr. Morrison. No great words of wisdom. Just <laughs> nice to see you all here. Looking forward to ending another successful school year. Praying for a wonderful graduation. Love the warm weather. Okay, I do have words of wisdom. Okay, well, maybe I'll have right. wisdom. Um, this is welcome, everybody. It's nice to see a room with lots of people here. Um, this has been an interesting week. I feel like I've spent it at the high school. Monday night, I was at the um, scholarship awards presentation and that was just amazing. We have incredible students in our community. I know other school districts say they do, but we really do. Just saying. And to sit there, one of the, there were just so many incredible awards being given out. One of our students received a full ride to the Air Force Academy and they announced the Lieutenant Colonel from Wright Pat who presented it said, and this award is worth $180,000. Yeah, I'm looking at Karen now, and I said, you hear me say to the audience, what? No, oh, really, that was, wait, wait, there was another one, I got a $100,000 scholarship to the Air Force, $5,000 scholarships, 2500 it was just amazing to see what our students have accomplished, it's just unbelievable. And then the list just went on, and then Tuesday night I was at the art show, and I really don't know the perspective, how these kids can even draw, you see these beautiful painting like where do you start really where do you start and then from there I went to the um, choir concert and that so here you have to picture Rachel Phillips our choir teacher who has broken her leg standing there for almost two hours conducting these kids just amazing and one of the numbers that I will never forget that brought me to tears and a lot of people in the audience, they did a tribute to the armed services and Rachel turned around and said, when you hear your armed services song, please stand. And you see people standing up and then sitting down and then standing up and sitting down and it just made you cry to think of, you know, we're all here tonight because what these people have done for us. So that was really moving. And then last night, I went to the band concert, and that was amazing because I'm just telling you, I don't even know where to begin. You, Matt Frost and Michael Bissett are such talented teachers, and what they bring to their students just shows in how they perform, the confidence they exude. It's just amazing. I'm going to tell you, one of the ensembles, the, um, all the ensembles, are presented, the kids do it themselves, they choose their own music, teachers are not involved at all. And the saxophone ensemble, the two pieces written were by one of the students. And these were not easy pieces, because I'm sitting there listening to these runs on these saxophones and thinking, how do you write music like that? Really, just amazing. And you need to know the symphonic band and the wind symphony received superior ratings this year. And the last time they received these ratings was in the 90s. So that, I know I didn't know that until I put that down. And the last, one of the last numbers was, was called Godzilla Eats Vegas. And so Matt Frost gets on this glitzy jacket. And then Godzilla comes out. And then Elvis comes out on the other side. And standing ovation at the end, this number was unbelievable and all these teachers are dressed up in these costumes Godzilla you know of course gets to the end but standing elevation so it was just amazing amazing we just have great teachers great kids and just had a share so I'm finished okay so we're moving on just had to tell you that Um, they will be there from 4.30 to 9. 
they're doing Rush this year. That's going to be their show. So that's going to be interesting. And then um, the All Jazz Concert is Monday night at 6 o'clock, May 23rd. It's between Coy and Trayvine when you walk in there, right there, so you have to bring your lawn chairs because it's an outside concert. So that should be good. I'll be good. And now, Mr. Nelson, it's all yours. Uh, I'm going to do it from right here if that's okay. okay. I'm the representative for the Green County Career Center, and I wanted to comment that they have finished a very solid year. And there's two important events coming up that I would like to invite everybody to. On the 24th at 7 p.m. at the Nutter Center is the Career Center uh, uh, Senior Recognition Ceremony. And then we also have our Peace Officer Graduation Ceremony on June 10th at the, uh, at, uh, I'm sorry, 6.30 and that's out at the Career Center. If those of you who don't know, the peace officer uh, training that we have is one of the top rated in the state. They do a very good job. So that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have no questions or comments from the public tonight. So we're going on to recognition. This is really cool. It's your night. We're going to turn it over to Mr. Speakman. Thank you very much. We have one uh, recognition that we want to do this evening for the Outstanding Educator Award. Um, annually, uh, our district presents these awards to um, educators for each building that demonstrate outstanding excellence in their profession. Um, and this year, uh, we are separating presentations um, into two evenings, one this evening, and then uh, we'll have everyone else at the June board meeting. Um, tonight's recipient, uh, luckily enough, is uh, not going to be here in June as uh, she has uh, some travel plans, so we wanted to make sure we invited her at this time. Um, I'm here tonight to, uh, on behalf of the board and the district administration, to recognize Ms. Erin O'Dell. Erin, uh, if you'd come up here for a moment, please. And you can stand right over there so that I can embarrass you fully. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Erin began her career at Beaver Creek City Schools in 2007 with a degree in middle childhood education from Miami University. And she's earned her master's degree in educational leadership from the University of Dayton in 2009. Uh, from her nominations, uh, nominations plural, for this award, it's clear that Erin puts students first. For example, one nomination stated, quote, she is a leader amongst her coworkers and a role model for her students. Erin's most outstanding quality is how much she cares about her students. This quality is also noticed by her students. As one reported, quote, she does fun games to make us want to learn, and she is fun to be around with a positive attitude. Erin's school activities um, that she show that she cares about our students, and she serves as the AP Middle School Character Education Building Representative, uh, as the Olveus Grade Level Coordinator, and as a member of the Night of Excellence Planning Committee. We congratulate Erin on her award this evening because we truly appreciate your dedication to our students and the community. And so this evening, by presenting the award and uh, going through this, the board adopts a resolution, and I'd like to read that resolution at this time. At the meeting of the Board of Education held today, Thursday, May 19th, 2016, the following resolution is adopted. Whereas the Beaver Creek Board of Education has established out the Outstanding Educator Award to recognize annually educators who, is, who exemplify the educational excellence, which is the keystone of our district. And whereas the board also wishes to recognize publicly the unique and vital contribution this educator makes to the schools day after day. And whereas Ms. Erin O'Dell, Ankeny Middle School teacher, has been selected as one of this year's outstanding educators based on her teaching excellence, her continued exhibition of high education, educational, personal, and professional standards, which bring credit and honor to themselves, the teacher, teaching profession, and to Beaver Creek City Schools. And so, therefore, be it resolved that the Beaver Creek Board of Education does hereby congratulate and acclaim Ms. Erin O'Dell for being selected as one of this year's Outstanding Educators and publicly expresses its sincere appreciation for her contribution and service to Beaver Creek City Schools. The board looks forward to her continued association with our district as a member of our staff and wishes her continued success.
and satisfaction in all future professional and personal endeavors. Aaron? Congratulations. All this emotion, it makes you kind of nervous. <laughs> and Aaron, this is, this is for you as well. Okay. Wow. 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 This whole thing has been amazing. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me to be here tonight. I really appreciate um, the invitation as I won't be here uh, when everybody else uh, receives their uh, recognition. It's also um, extremely deserved. I am truly humbled to be recognized among the extremely talented and passionate Ankeny staff. Years ago, I learned from a fellow teacher to create a smile file. As you receive special cards, emails, pictures, or, or mementos, you file them away to take out on those days where you need a boost. I'm so appreciative of this word because my smile file has doubled. Reminding me how fortunate I am to be a Beaver Creek teacher working with um, wonderful students and families, a supportive staff, and excellent leadership. It was also a reminder of how great it is when we extend gratitude freely and without occasion. I was first inspired to become a teacher by my mother. Um, she has always served her school community with a grace and devotion that is unmatched. I've learned from her the art of teaching extends well beyond the pages of a textbook. I also fell in love with teaching because of the outstanding education I received as a Beaver Creek student. There are too many teachers to po that positively impacted my life to even name. And now as a teacher in the district, I'm constantly inspired by the t people I've had the pleasure of calling colleagues and friends. Thank you goes to our administration and school board. I am lucky to work in such a supportive district who values character education, technology, and investigative learning. A heartfelt thanks to my parents. All that I am, all that I hope to be, I owe to my loving parents. A big thank you to my husband, Charlie, who is also a middle school teacher. Charlie is a hardworking, humble teacher who is my biggest cheerleader. One perk of us both being educators, besides the understanding and support we provide to each other, is the fact that we have our summers off. As Darren mentioned, we'll be hitting the road with our camper on June 8th for a month-long vacation to drive Highway 1. I believe everyone I meet on my journey will quickly learn how proud I am to be a Beaver Creek resident, graduate, and teacher. Thank you so much for this.
my honor to be here tonight to present this to the Beaver Creek Local School District and Penny Rucker, the treasurer, with the Auditor's State Award with distinction for the 2015 year fiscal audit period. To receive this award, you must complete a comprehensive annual financial report within six months of fiscal year end, have a clean audit with no findings for recovery, material citations, material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, single audit findings, or question costs. Have no financial concerns in any way. The management letter must contain no comments related to ethic referrals, question costs, less than $10,000, lack of timely report submission, reconciliation issues, failure to obtain a timely single audit, findings for recovery, for public meetings for public records issues. As you can tell, that's a mouthful of stuff that you have to meet the uh, criteria for. This award represents the hard work of every school employee who strives each day to achieve accounting excellence. And I also want to recognize the elected school board members that have done an excellent job in accounting for every dollar within the school district. I especially want to recognize Treasurer Penny Rucker for her outstanding leadership, professionalism, and commitment to fiscal integrity. Job well done, Treasurer. And on behalf of Auditor Ghost, I'd like to present the Auditor State Board with distinction. Both areas as it relates to East Park. 
and teachers as well. So I'm also going to break the data down into grade bands. So our K-2 population grew from 61 to 66 percent, and our 3-5 from 65 to 69, and our 6-8 from 64 to 67. So again, those students are growing above the rate of all other students on a national level. Metric two is pretty exciting because it's really looking at how did our kids do in the fall? Because when they took the NWA test in the fall, this, the NWA gave a projected growth for every single student. And then you look at that in the spring to see did our students meet that projected growth RIT score that NWA and, um, found for those students. Um, for those students and what we have found is there are two areas the goal which is the spark goals and non-goal is really what our teachers are doing in the classroom so when you look at the goal the goal is 100 percent in the non-goal area our students grew 112 percent and that's really teacher effect so not only are the students doing well based on the great teaching that's going on on a day-to-day -day basis but in the specified goals that they were working on on their eSpark quests, those students in grades K-8 grew 150%. So above and beyond those expectations. So what's wonderful about this data tonight is we're, we're not just showing eSpark growth, we're showing growth in the classroom as well. And so our kids are pretty much soaring as they're moving through um, the spark as well as just good classroom teaching. When you break that down, the expected growth in the goal and non-goal areas, um, in math, 111%, um, and in their goal areas in eSpark, they grew 148%, and then in reading, 115% and 153% in those goal areas. So we're seeing great growth in both math and reading. When you break it down by grade bands, you can also see that our students did exceptionally well. If you recall last year, they did not grow as much in the middle school, and middle school is always tough because you're trying to keep them engaged, you're trying to keep them motivated, and there's just great growth this year um, and the goal area 164 percent which was the highest um, last year it was more in the three to five grade range when you go through each building you will see that we are successful in every single building so when you look at Ankeny's they went from 64 to 66 um, they gained two percentile points nationally, and then in their non-goal and goal area, it was 111 and 149. So I'm not going to go through and read every single building, but if you go to the very end of the packet, it has a summary of the school results, and when you look at the overall results, you will see that every single building did well. And when you go to the very last page and you look at the disciplines of math and reading, you will again see that our students are showing significant growth as a result of our streaming grant initiative. And we're now going to be going into year three. And I predict that our students will continue to be successful and our teachers will also continue to be successful in meeting the individual needs of every one of our students in K-8. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I send the agenda's approval of the candidates held. I need um, motion and second. To approve the minutes for um, the board meeting of April 4th and April 21st. April 4th was a special meeting. April 21st was a regular meeting, followed by 2016. Okay. Second. Second. Discussion. Okay. Motion second. Discussion. Ms. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. 
Ms. Ravana? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yeah. Motion carries. We need a motion a second to approve following the meetings. I said, um, Okay, May 2016 five-year forecast update, April 2016 financial reports and acceptance of donated items. So we need a motion to second and we'll discuss it. So moved. Okay, discussion is important. Tonight is just giving you the update as things stand in relationship to that initial forecast. Um, we um, had a few minor changes in our forecast, but mainly we're on target. We we're very pleased with where we're at this time of the year. We see that we are actually coming in ahead of budget and ahead of schedule. We have more money on the bottom line than what we thought. In our Graph here. These are the same graphs, and you know we're getting very comfortable in analyzing our data with some constant graphs and charts and metrics. That way, you're going to really know when there's a change. Um, so in this, when we're looking at the revenues versus the expenditures, um, um, one moment. I'm going to pass these out to you guys. Here's some PowerPoint slides. I'm sorry, I should have handed that to you earlier. Um, the cash balance remains positive through the forecast if our levy is renewed. So what is our levy renewal schedule? So last May we did renew already one of our levies that needed to be renewed, and it was the larger one, the 10.9 mil levy, over $18 million that went in. So that got renewed last May. Um, next May we need to renew the uh, 6.3 mil levy for $10.4 million what's left on that one. And um, so that's what this forecast is going to project and it's going to assume a couple of things. It's going to assume those projections in it. There's another thing that's, that we're going to assume. We're going to assume some consistencies in state funding compared to this biennium budget. So every two years the biennium budget changes. So we're we're making some assumptions that there, there will be some consistencies with the variables. Um, so our revenues and expenses are showing our levy expi you know, expires in you know, 18 or in 19. And we're going to have to go ahead and do the review because we can start next May with the renewal. And you got May, November, May, November that you can, you've got two years to renew um, so that you don't lapse in collecting your revenue. So those are the things that we're going to look at. The other thing you're going to see here is the ending cash balance if you don't renew the levy. One of the things we're very cognizant of is a 30 to 60 day cash balance as a re responsible target to end the year. You don't want to end the year with zero or negative money. That's not good. I worked with the district that was in the fiscal emergency. That's not good. Um, the, the, you want to make sure you're going to project, you're going to make sure you're going to have your levies passed, you're going to make sure you get your renewals in, you're going to make sure that you're managing and monitoring your expenditures to make sure that you're not having too much of an outflow so that you're um, off target. So right now, and uh, Dr. McLaughlin and I, if you've been around a while, you, you've heard us talk about renewing these two levies and that we would need new money out in like 18, 19 time frame. That has been the plan. Because when we passed the levy that we did pass, the new levy, um, the last new levy, that was in 2000, November of 2013 for collections in um, fiscal year 2014, there were levy promises that went with that levy. Some of the things that we promised was we were bringing back transportation. We were going to do more with the reading and intervention and K through 3. There's a whole list in your notes to these financial statements. There's a whole list of promises that we had to make. So we had to add a lot of staff back because in the recession, we had deep, deep cuts in this district. Um, they cut so many positions, like 60-some positions was cut in this district. 
The entire staff took a 2% pay cut. They froze the salary um, steps so that no one could step. So all of those deep cuts in the prior um, slide, you'll be able to see there was a dip in that red line. The red line is your expenditures. You can see back in 14 and 15 that our expenditures actually dipped down and then they started an upward trend, which is typical when you're talking ongoing expenditures over a period of time. Typically, you will see at least some inflationary increases. So with all of that, now we're starting to come up to where we are having some um, planning that we are doing and we're saying, okay, to have these levy promises, to um, look at the level of service that we can um, provide because you don't get these types of results that Dr. Hayward just talked about. You don't get these results going on the cheap. When you have to make great cuts in your programs and in your staffing because we are a service um, provider, so labor and benefits is gonna be the majority of our expenditures. You're not going to do those types of results without having staff in order to train and teach our students. So when we're looking at our ending cash balances in 19, uh, or in 2020, we're looking at perhaps doing a new levy in either 18 or 19, and we'll talk about that in a minute. That would have been without the renewal, but we're gonna really focus on with the renewal because so far we've had a pretty good track record with our renewals. We renewed our PI levy, first time. We renewed our levy last May that I spoke of, no problem. So we're hoping that when we renew our levy next May, with the um, positive trend in the economy, you know, slow but stable, we're hoping that we will continue and have this ending cash balance that we're gonna look at, um, and that we will be able to um, meet our 60-day cash ratio in 2019, and then in 2020 is when we fall short, but yet not in a deficit. We have $8 million on the bottom line, but nonetheless, not what we want to see. So in 18 or 19, we really want to start looking at things. Well, then you start thinking about, well, how do we plan for this? How, how, what's going on here? So if you stand back and look, you say, okay, in May, May of 2017, we're going to run that renewal for the 6.3 mil levy. Okay, we did it. We're going to do that next year. Then in May of 18, maybe, maybe we would put in new money, a new levy. Because in May of 19, you're going to have to run the renewal again for that 10.9 mil or 11 mil levy. So that's kind of where my mind is right now as far as when I start looking at the out years in our five-year forecast. And what that does also is in 2021, 22, and 23, you're talking renewal, 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 right in a row. So um, instead of having renewals every two years, we're going to have to have a renewal every year. If we continue with the five-year emergency levy, we don't have the continuing levies. That's an option. You can always put them on it as continuing. Um, we, we've tossed that around, but you're taking the risk because right now we know the renewals are passing. So when you put one on as a continuing, is the community going to support it? Um, and we can talk more about that as we get into it uh, later and start doing our planning. The tax year 15 values overall are up three quarters of a percent. Like I said, slow, steady. Not going down, not staying the same, going up a little bit, but slow. 1.7, so one mil would bring in 1.7 million dollars. Um, the general fund revenue sources, we're talking 76% local taxes and 24% state taxes. Um, again, the one thing that we found this year in our finances is that we had the delinquent taxes was up a little bit. $808,320 came in one-time money. And so uh, we were about 98.1% accurate on our revenue. And the difference was mainly the same 108000 that we didn't expect. So we're pretty happy with what our projections were showing. Challenges. What are the challenges to our revenue? Well, the new formula versus the enrollment 
In the state formula, you can be in three different categories. You can either be on the cap on how you're getting funded, you can be on the formula on how you're getting funded, or you can be on the guarantee. The cap is where the formula gives you too much money, so they cap you and say, we're only going to give you this amount. The formula means whatever the formula, all the 342 variables are, that's what you get, and the state says, yeah, we agree with that. We agree with that. And the guarantee is the formula puts all the variables in, and it's not enough for you to do business, and so they give you more money on the guarantee than what your formula could actually give you. Um, like for an example, when I was in large urbans, they put them on the cap. The formula gives them a lot of money. The state can't afford it. It's over 500 and some uh, million dollars that it would cost the state if everybody who was on the cap wasn't on the cap. Um, the formula, that's where we are. And then the guarantee is, again, a lot of your um, like school districts down on the river that we talk about, they can't yield enough money because of their wealth index being so low that the state just gives them a guaranteed amount that they're going to make sure that they can bring in. We are on the formula, but by how much? So the big question is, that the board needs to know is, if you're on the formula, how close are you to the cap, or how close are you to the guarantee? Well, we are closer to a cap than we are a guarantee. We're above a guarantee by about $800,000. So if we were on the guarantee, we'd get about $11.1 million. On the formula, we're at $11.918. If we were on the cap, we would be at $11,942. That's only a difference of about $24,000, or four kids, at the $5,800 amount. So we're getting real close to being on a cap, which would mean if you bring in more and more students, they're gonna cap you anyway, okay? So you're, only, you're not really gonna get the funding for it, which would really mean they're gonna be locally funded. Um, so that's what the formula is doing to us right now. So, so those formula issues are things we monitor, we, we, we measure, and we try to strategize, you know, how it's going to impact us. So that kind of helps us know how to move. Because right now, every decision made in the district, we make sure that how it impacts in the formula, for example, wealth and all of those things. Because these new formulas are looking at our, our income and our wealth and how um, we can raise local dollars, right? So that's been some of the bigger issues that a district like ours, more of a high wealth district, has had to grapple with. Our expenditures, our wages and benefits, are about 82% of our budget. Um, our expenditures did increase in the next few years throughout the forecast, basically because of staffing and because of the wage projections. So. Um, those details are in our notes to our financial statements. However, we did have a lot of the additional funding to do that with because we were under budget for the year and we had the additional revenues. So, um, for example, we had put in the five-year forecast the 2.75% that we settled on in the last negotiations for this year and next year. But then in the out years of the, of the five year, we had put 1% in because we didn't know what it was going to be. Well, now we've went ahead and bumped that up to 2% because we're having a 275 and a 275, and then doing your reading, if you keep up with what's in the OSBA journal, um, every so often, pretty much every time they put one out on the back of it, it says what the latest negotiations have been, you know, what percentage they're settling on. So we went ahead with the 2%, and I think it's more realistic for our planning, especially since we have all this levy planning to look at. When you look at currently what we're projecting as far as all of our expenditures, um, we break it down then by wages, benefits, purchase services, materials, capital, all those different um, colors on your bar chart. Again, you can see the red and the blue, your salaries and your benefits are the predominant expenditures for our district. The current operating levels would require adjustments or new money long term, as we've already discussed. 
Um, we've already talked about the, the 10.4 million emergency levy being renewed. We've talked about the new biennium budgets. We have two bienniums in this five years, so um, like I said, we can only make some assumptions that they would be something close to what we're getting now. Um, uh, the actual state aid formula shows our projections were on target. The staffing plan will continue as a valuable administrative tool in the forecast and budget process to control the cost. That's something Darren and I work on. And the expenditures require continued close oversight because we're not going to be able to manage those long term without determining whether we're going to make cuts or go for new money or do a combination or whatever we decide. But obviously, we're getting to the point where a strategy will need to be hammered out at some point. So, but again, as I would just say to you that I've been pretty pleased with how the uh, progress has been this year. We've got a great bottom line that we're moving forward with, and we've been able to make some positive tweaks in the five-year forecast, I think, to make it even more realistic. So if I, you have any questions, I'll be glad to take those. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Mr. Reed? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Ms. Arnold? Yes. Ms. Hunt? Abstain? Ms. Rodano? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Motion. Motion carries. The next item is new business, and we're going to need a motion and a second to approve the following that we discussed <coughs> on the employment salary changes and the absence of terminations, summer school dates and fees for 2016-2017, Eater Creek High School graduating class of 2016, approval type, oh yeah, right, six, four, reimbursements. Um, resolution was rising continued membership in the Ohio School Athletic Association for the 2016-17 school year and physicians providing physicals. So I'm going to have you, Dr. McLaughlin, explain like the approval of the reimbursements sure. and physicians providing physicals. Why? Maybe we have a first. Oh, uh, let's do it. Yep, we need a motion and a second first. Thank you. Okay, now we're Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, before we uh, move too far into the uh, new business items, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Schmidt introduce two guests that we have with us this evening that will be approving their contracts. Thank you, Dr. Boffin and the board. Um, it's it's a very busy time uh, in uh, human resources as uh, teachers announce retirements, lives take them to other journeys, um, and uh, and uh, so um, I want. Glad to introduce tonight, um, as part of the agenda, uh, two new staff members that are, are have been recommended for employment for the 16-17 school year. I'd like to um, ask Melanie to say hi. This is Melanie Hello. Fisher. Melanie is joining us as a licensed school nurse. She's uh, spent the last school year uh, with Columbus Public Schools and is eager to come here to Beaver Creek, and we're glad that you're joining us. Thank you very much for being here tonight, and welcome to Beaver Creek. Yeah. And then also I'd like to introduce you to our new Director of Business Services. This is Mr. Greg Thompson. Greg joins us from Dublin City Schools, where he has been uh, the facilities uh, supervisor for the last 10 years, if I remember that correctly. And welcome, Greg. We're glad you're here. Great to be here. Thanks, Dr. Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greg. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, following the employment with summer school dates and fees, as you know, we're required to provide a uh, third grade reading guarantee, reading intervention during the summer for young people who do not pass the uh, third grade reading guarantee. Unfortunately, last year we had no student that would be required to take that, but we still offer it. Also, we offer summer school for grades six to eight in high school. The next item would be the uh, one that we're all excited about. Uh, May 28th, the graduation of the class of 2016, 581 students are eligible to graduate on Saturday. And then item D would be approval of type 4 reimbursements. Again, these would be payment in lieu of transportation to parents as it was deemed impractical to transport their child. And you'll see that come up and down throughout the school year, generally in the fall. But you'll see some more students as we work through the registration process this summer. 
uh, E is the resolution authorizing community membership in Ohio High School Athletic Association. This is an annual requirement for our students to participate, our athletes to participate in tournaments during the school year and also a set of bylaws in which we have to follow. And then finally, the physicians providing physicals. This would be for our transportation department. We have to identify doctors that we would like them to go to to have their physicals uh, before they can drive our buses in the fall. And that would be it. Thank you.